Hello everyone, it is Jay from Whiskey Raiders, better known as Take. Thank you for joining me back here on the channel. Today we're covering five whiskeys that I'm super pumped about. Five whiskeys that I really think everyone should have in their collection, but it's not going to be the standard whiskeys you see across YouTube. One of my biggest pet peeves is seeing the same list over and over and over and over again. And so I went ahead and decided that if I wanted to change that, I was going to publish my own. Let's go ahead and start with one of my favorites. This this one I think is probably going to be the most well known on the list, but I still think a lot of people are passing on it. So this is Penelope, uh, the Architect series. So the Architect series is a combination of oak finishes uh, that are kind of run through their proprietary oak scan technology. It's a wine making term. Uh, the boys from Penelope have been in the news a lot lately because they were acquired for a million bajillion dollars. But overall, this is a whiskey that is 104 proof. I think it's extremely drinkable. It's extremely unique. It's really fun. Uh, it really kind of brings that double oaking uh, to the craft market in a way that not a lot of people are doing it. And the best part is it's like 70 to 80 bucks and you should be able to buy this at most stores in the United States. So Penelope the Architect, first pick. I think you guys uh, should really give this one a shot, especially if you've been curious about double oaked whiskeys or really if you're you know over Woodford double oaked and think that that might be the only piece on the market, I think you can do one better. Moving on, we have Ben Holiday. Uh, this is a really cool, and this is a Missouri straight whiskey, which is actually a protected category. It uh, requires that all of the grain come from Missouri, that it be distilled, bottled, aged in Missouri. It's really cool. This is a bottled and bond whiskey. I'll hold this up. They have a really kind of striking label that I think is fun. This is the fifth distillery that was ever started in Missouri. It's DSP M05. This is a, I wanna say, yeah, this is a six year, and it is bottled and bond, so 50% ABV. Um, they're hitting an incredible mark for value right now, and it's really delicious. Their soft red wheat is also really good. Uh, I would have put that on my list today, except I don't have a bottle uh, because I drank it all. So it's, it's gone. Uh, I love the other holidays. This is my second bottle of their Bottled and Bond. Um, I bought two last year after they sent over an initial bottle for review. It's, it's a really cool place. I hope to get there in the fall when I'm traveling through the area. Uh, it's just a new kind of take on whiskey, and I think that this is a brand that's gonna go far. You're seeing a lot of people talk about them on social media. I think that their time, like, they're starting to heat up, but their time in the limelight hasn't even gotten here yet. So these guys are gonna heat up for sure. Uh, definitely a bottle that I think you should have. This is the Ben Holiday Bottled in Bond. This is one that it, it may be tricky. I, I, I say that it should be available to everyone because you can just go online and buy it. For the most part, it's being tricky. This is Starward Whiskey. This is an Australian company. Uh, this is a particular single barrel. Uh, I don't want to talk about this single barrel yet. I've got a different project for it, but everything I've had from Starward uh, has been a really, really cool whiskey. They're an Australian producer. If they finish in wine barrels, they use only Australian wines. They have a really, really cool program. Um, and all of these you know, come out pretty good. This is 55.5% ABV. It's going to be under $100. I think Starward is a producer that people mix up with the Westlands and the Westwards and like the other star distilleries like Starlight. And like, so it's not a generic name, but it's a difficult name to kind of pin down as being really unique, right? To stick out in your mind. But the color on this whiskey is just like, it's just incredible. Like here, this is the light. This is a fresh crack of a new bottle I brought in. This is a brand that I think if you see a bottle, go ahead and give it a go. I know Aster did some single cast in New York. I know that KL has done some on the West Coast. Uh, but if you see a Star Wars, pick it up. It's gonna kind of change the landscape of your collection for the better. Moving on is a brand uh, that a lot of people know, but they don't know that they know it. And this is K Luke. K Luke is um, from the Mesanos behind the very popular retail chain. Uh, this is named for their two children. Um, essentially, uh, Jonathan Mesano has been picking single barrels for a very long time. He's one of the storied uh, kind of curators of single barrels out in the market. But as the market has changed, he's gotten a little frustrated with how the conglomerates and the big companies are allocating single barrels and they decided that they were going to make their own bourbon. And I think that's really cool. He, he kind of cites that uh, his favorites are always those Four Roses Small Batch Limited Editions, that those are big and spicy and have all the flavors he likes. And so they have a unique blending process. This is batch five. This is a touch over $100, but the toasted bourbon, toasted rye, and the new batches are all coming out soon. I think batch six is on the way as well. What's cool about their process is that they blend and then they try blind against all of their favorite things, whether it's from Beam or whether it's from Four Roses or whether it's from other producers. And that that takes a lot of balls because it means you have to do a 
lot of blending to get something that you think is unilaterally uh, well done. And that reminds me a lot of the blending process for the take batch from Barrel Craft Spirits that we wrapped up with Barrel in the spring that is available now. That's a shameless plug. It's kind of a, uh, it was a one-off project I did. Like we will probably do more, but I don't have a brand base around it. And it's a ton of work. Like it took us all day uh, to get through just a couple, you know, like we did several iterations, but I can't imagine if you're doing, like if you're on your sixth batch, that's going to take some significant time and also significant whiskey. So it's a little bit pricey. It's because there's older whiskey in it. I think that uh, if you're going to use older whiskey, uh, the price has to make sense. And so as a result, K. Luke has been hitting really well. It's all over social media. It's all all over YouTube. It's a popular choice and I'm not going to buck the trend here. K. Luke Batch 5, really good. If you see it uh, in an online retailer you like or if it starts to come to stores near you, I'd say that it is worth a pickup. All right, last and certainly not least, this is a bottle that I'm pumped about. This is my second bottle. Uh, it's brand new, just came in. The first one, I split up a bunch with some friends. We had a great tasting. This is still Austin's Cast Strength Rye Whiskey. Uh, their rye is hitting really well. Their bourbon has been drinking really phenomenally. Uh, it, it's kind of crazy that this is the first Texas distillery that I am really gung-ho about. Falconis has been kind of trending up lately. Uh, still not the biggest fan of Garrison or TX or Andalusia or any of those other ones, but, and that's the difficulty of the climate, but still Austin is, is using um, some older traditional methods. They're doing a little proofing in cask, which kind of helps offset the heavy tannins from the crazy weather down in Texas. And they also have Nancy Fraley, who is one of the best blenders in the market. And uh, their rye whiskey, the regular Regular rye whiskey, John and I covered in the podcast, uh, the Whiskey Raiders podcast for the record. Um, I've given it great reviews, and so the cast strength is just absolutely baller. Um, this is the, it's kind of nice. I have a spare one here, uh, so you guys get to see the full packaging, but it's, it's really beautiful artwork, really cool whiskey. It's punchy, it's fun, it's viscous, it's rich. You know, it's, it's not at 120 proof, but it tastes like it has a viscosity like it does. And overall, they're just a cool brand. So Still Austin is picking up distribution. You're going to see them in a lot of different states soon. I like that I can actually find them when I go down to Chicago. I can buy them online. Really cool producer. And the best part is these are always going to be about under 100 bucks. Even the single cast, I want to say are like 79, 89 at most places. Uh, a little bit higher if you're in an expensive metro. But really just overall, overall cool stuff. I like what they do. The artwork is neat. If your collection doesn't have any Texas and you've been feeling that hole, I think Still Austin is the no-brainer brand to go ahead and put in the portfolio. Last but not least is a bonus whiskey. Um, I kind of hesitate sometimes because I talk about this brand a lot, but they continue to do really great stuff and that's kind of what the YouTube channel is about. So Barrel Batch 35. This is their newest bourbon. You can see I've been enjoying it myself. Really cool stuff here. Um, this is a blend of six, seven, eight, and 13 year whiskey from a bunch of different states. It is bottled, I wanna say, yeah, it's 58% alcohol. So it's definitely, um, you know, it's no bruiser, but it's got plenty of character there. And this guy, really enjoyable. I love the balance of oak and spice that they've been bringing to these recent batches. It's gonna be about 79 to $99 based on your market, really available. I think that a lot of people hesitate to pick up new batches because they still have some of the old batches. But if you are looking for products that are generally about the same age, that are generally blended with the same methodology in mind, and are certainly priced about the same. Uh, if you're trying to build a flight at home, I would grab an older batch, maybe in the high 20s. I would grab like a 32 or 33, and then grab this new batch 35. It makes for a fun flight. You can definitely taste the difference. You can see how the components are coming together. And since my uh, the take batch that I was talking about a little bit earlier in the video is in a different room, this is a great way to say that check that out as well. So overall, really nice whiskey. They make a ton of it, so it's going to be around. You don't have to go out and panic by it, but I would encourage you to grab one. Again, this is batch 35. Um, it won, I wanna say a gold, yeah, gold at San Francisco, so that's why it's got a sticker there. Um, I don't really, I think the sticker, to be honest, is kinda just, it always looks super clean without it. Uh, you know, the private selects used to go here. Um, so if you have a private select, you'll still see it there, but I don't know, I'm whatever on the sticker. But that's neither here nor there. All right, guys, so these are six whiskeys. I know that I said in the beginning of the video that it would be five whiskeys that I thought that you should really have on your bar. Um, it just turns out I'm a liar. There's one in here I couldn't leave behind. So overall, uh, just to kind of sum up, these are all whiskeys you should be able to find. They're all going to be available. They'll either be around or under uh, $100. 
I really enjoy them. They're they're kind of different picks. These aren't like hype brands. You can see there's no Buffalo Trace in here. There's no problem with that. There's no Wild Turkey in here. Uh, these are all products that I genuinely think I see people uh, look at when they're at the liquor store and then move on to something else, maybe something more familiar. So this is your sign to go and pick one up. If you do, please let me know in the comments which you grabbed and which you like. This has been five Scratch That No Six available whiskeys uh, that I think your bar really needs to kind of stay, stay modern, stay interesting, and I'll get you out of that rut, whatever it may be. And uh, yeah, so let me know your thoughts in the comments, guys. I'm going to go ahead and drink some of this K. Luke. Uh, that's for sure. So uh, I will catch you guys in the next video, guys. Uh, take as always. You can find me over at whiskeyridders.com, and I will see you for the next video here on the channel. Thank <laughs> you.